Misha. I'm part of the Gradient team here at Paperspace. And today we're going to be diving into PyTorch and how to get up and running in training a classifier. We're going to be going through this sample notebook that we set up and showing you how to load and normalize data from CIFAR, how do you define a convolutional neural net, define your loss function, and then how to go and train and then evaluate your model against your data set. Gradient is an end-to-end -end machine learning platform for making it really easy for you to get access to powerful GPU infrastructure and really operationalize your machine learning systems. Let's go and get started. So here we're inside of a notebook that's running on Paperspace, and we're going to go and um, run through this for you and kind of walk, um, walk through the different elements of the machine learning training process here. So first off, we're going to go in and make sure that matplotlib, which is a plotting library for Python, will go in and display inside of Jupyter. Then we're going to define our imports. So we're importing Torch and TorchVision and TorchVision Transforms. Torch and PyTorch are is one of the most popular deep learning frameworks today. And TorchVision Torch is its um, sub-library that allows you to easily work with image-related data sets, which is what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to go in and import that, and then also go in and define and download our data set. So we're going to be, for each data set that we have, we're going to be converting the image to a tensor and then normalizing everything. So all of the data will be in the same form. And then we're going to be defining the set of training um, sets and their associated loaders, as well as for the test set. So TorchVision is really nice in the fact that it has a torchvision.datasets utility from which you can go in and pull a whole variety of the most popular image data sets. And we're going to go and pull that down into our root and do that um, for the, our test set as well. So it's important to have both a training and a test set so that you are developing your machine learning model on one and then validating how well it performs against the other. And so this um, CIFAR 10 data set here has a ton of images around planes, cards, birds, cats, deers, et cetera. And our goal is going to be to, given a photo of a plane or a horse or a truck, identify what it is. So we've uh, pulled this down. And then let's go and kind of pull a couple of sample images here. So we're using matplotlib and defining a little helper function here to unnormalize the image after um, receiving it. And then we're using this train loader here, which allows us to iterate over the data sets inside there. And then we're going to go in and display a set of these as a grid. So here's a photo of a deer, a cat, a ship, and a frog. The next step that you're always going to follow, and so if we keep running this, it's just randomly sampling through those. So we're kind of getting a whole variety of images in there. So the next step is going to be to define our neural network. Here we're going to be using a very um, simple neural network, and we're going to be training it from scratch. So we're defining a neural net class, which um, inherits from the neural net module. And so the architecture here is we have uh, two convolutional layers split by a max pooling one, and then um, three uh, linear layers inside there. And the way that we do our forward pass is how we go in and kind of define the way that the data flows through this. So as the input comes in, we're going to be um, kind of pulling it, doing our activation function, and then feeding it through these two convolutional layers, and then going to be um, feeding it in through the other ones. So when we instantiate this net object, that is our machine learning model. The next step is to, um, in this cell here, to define our optimizer. And so we're using a cross entropy loss and a stochastic gradient descent. So there's kind of a whole um, set of loss and optimization algorithms, which folks have already um, implemented. And we're going and passing it in with a specific learning rate and momentum. So these are all parameters which you can optimize. Um, and we'll probably go in and dive into that in some later sessions. So this next step here is the actual training loop. So I'm going to go and kick that off now. So we want to kind of go in and set our um, device to be on GPU if we have that. And then what we're doing is for each of the 12,000 photos inside CIFAR 10, we're going to go in and loop over it and then do this standard flow here, which is 
for the data inside our training set, we're going to kind of zero the parameter gradients, and then we're going to do the forward and backward propagation. So we're going to, given an, a set of image inputs, we're going to get what the model predicts it is. And then we're going to calculate our loss, which is how well the model actually performed, given what the images really were. And then we're going to go and do our backward step, which takes advantage of the um, optimizer that we have here to try and update the weights inside this neural net that we defined to be more predictive of what is actually going on underneath the hood. So here we are going and we're kind of doing two loops over the data set. And so kind of over each iteration, we see that the loss of our machine learning model keeps going down, which means that we're getting less examples incorrect. And so this step process here will go in and take a certain amount of time. Um, something to note that we're printing every 2,000 mini batches. So kind of here's the first mini batch, here's the second one, here's the third. And so kind of each of these is a set of the photos from CIFAR that we're training our machine learning model on. And so when we come back, we'll go and kind of take this trained model and then go in and kind of continue on through the evaluation process and understand how well this model really performs. So at this point, we've gone through a single pass of the data set. Generally, the amount of time that it takes to train these machine learning models increases as the number of parameters and weights. Like this architecture is relatively simple, but as we go in and kind of make it have more and more parameters, we're going to, it has more and more weights that it needs to go in and update to really converge to a model which will predict if it's a truck or a dog or a cat. And so again, we're training this from scratch. So all of these weights have no values at all once we start this process off. And we're gonna go in and get a model which has this accuracy. So there's a couple of different machine learning metrics which people use to evaluate machine learning models. Here we're using loss, but you also, at the end of the day, want to can have your um, kind of the kind of accuracy, which is kind of the um, do you care about the false positive versus the false negative rate or the sensitivity and specificity. And, um, and depending on the machine learning task that you're doing, you're also going to potentially care about a different metric. So if you look at some of the machine learning leaderboards, kind of what's the best text model or the best image model or the best language conversation model, they all kind of have different metrics. So if you hear terms like F1 score or blue, all of those are around just kind of evaluating the model against a specific training set. One thing that I wanted to point out here that's really um, important is we're um, taking our, so we kind of have this uh, train loader here. So this is, we're kind of purely on our, um, kind of doing this on a subset of the data. So if we look where we define our train loader, so here we're kind of taking this from the um, training set that we are doing it on. So kind of each of the batches that we're doing has four images. So if we increase that, it, the model would potentially train faster, but it might also kind of miss a loss function and kind of take a little bit longer to converge. Um, there's kind of lots of tips and tricks that we're gonna dive into in later sessions here. So once we kind of finish training our model, we're, we're actually gonna then go in and test and evaluate how well it performed. And so when we did this, we actually passed in a training parameter. And so that splits the data set appropriately. Kind of generally it does a 80-20 split or you go and perform some cross-validation um, on that and kind of train on multiple different subsets of the data. Here we're keeping them entirely distinct. So we're training on a subset of the CIFAR 10 image data and then we're gonna be testing down here. So let's scroll down to this machine learning model here. And so we see that we completed training with an act with a loss of 1.267. And so here I'm gonna do something which is, um, you don't necessarily need to do at this stage, but just showing you that you can easily save your machine learning model after training or during training while you're outputting checkpoints. So if we go in and perform this, kind of on the file system, we'll actually be able to see that we have the uh, machine learning model here. So if I do an LS on this um, value here, or if I just do an LS, I'll see kind of all the different files that we have inside 
here. So we have kind of the C410 tutorial that we're running through, and then this um, PTH file. So the PTH is the way that um, PyTorch saves the models. So this is a serialized version. And what we can do is we can actually then easily go in and load that model back in. So let's take a step back here and take a look at some of the images that we're um, making predictions again. So this is kind of from the test loader. So these are totally distinct images from what we trained on. And then as we go and we kind of redefine our network architecture, and then we kind of load the state of the dictionary. So this is all of the different parameter values that we went in and learned during training. We're going to go and be able to um, kind of resume from where we left off before. So this, these set of images up here that we um, just pulled in, which is kind of this cat, this ship, this ship, and this plane, let's go and see what the model thinks that they are. So we went in and um, grabbed the outputs. So the output is a 10 um, class, or it's kind of a vector with 10 values inside of it, where each one is the confidence that the machine learning model is um rep or the input is that specific output so here we went in and predicted what it is so we got cat plane car and plane so um it kind of it mistook a um the ship wasn't um per classified perfectly and that happened so but let's go in and take a look at how it performs on the entire data set here so here we're going in again iterating through all of the data inside the test sub subset and then doing the same process that we did during training, except we're not actually doing the back propagation. We're just going in and doing a forward pass. So this is how you do inference or prediction. And then we're summarizing the um, kind of amount of examples that we got correctly. So here we went in and trained and got up to a 56% accuracy, which is um, not the best, but it did learn some information. So if we go in and do a much larger neural network, or use a pre-trained backbone, we might go and experience significantly higher um, accuracies. But let's go in and take a look at what exactly inside here performed well and what didn't. Maybe there was a data misbalance where kind of on the, maybe we didn't have some samples in the train set that we did in the test. So what we're doing is we're kind of, again, doing this um, evaluation process here and we are kind of accruing what the accuracies are. So here we can kind of take a look that there are some classes that we're predicting far better, such as cars, and then we're incorrectly guessing the birds and the deers and the dogs. And again, here we're only kind of outputting what the best prediction is, um, where we're kind of just grabbing the top value of that. So, but again, it's still making predictions that this might be a 60% confidence bird and 55% confidence dog. So there we go. Thanks for joining today and looking forward to having you back on lesson two.